Hey, it's Form Check Friday, Los Angeles edition, episode two. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to another Form Check Friday. I'm Paul. Clint isn't even here today. I am trying to find a quiet place to shoot these videos. So today I'm at Sarah's place uh, there at the rehab center. Uh, supporting their mother, who I mentioned last time is dealing with a brain tumor. So on that note, thank you guys so much for contributing to the GoFundMe that I put up last time. Really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the family. I'm not going to link to it again. Um, it's not about the money, but your show of support is definitely appreciated. And um, if you could send thoughts and prayers and good vibes, like that's all we need. So thank you again. Um, for those of you who weren't with us last time, I came down for Christmas and we found out that Sarah's mom had a brain tumor. So we've been dealing with that. Things are kind of up in the air right now. I was supposed to be back in Idaho, but um, I'm here with some camera gear I fortunately brought down. Apologies for last time. The audio I thought was recording on this cool little mic I got myself for Christmas uh, wasn't. So you were just getting the crappy AirPods audio. I tried to make it sound good, but I think I've got it going this time. There should be a little red light on there that's telling me it's actually recording this time. So hopefully this one sounds better. Thanks for bearing with me. And I'll be back at some point with my regular studio gear and we'll make this look a lot better. But in the meantime, we are going to go forth with your form checks. That's why we're all here. Thank you guys for posting. Uh, thank you guys for watching, commenting, all of it. I really appreciate it. So. As you know, I have not seen any of these and we are gonna do this together and hopefully we can get through everybody today. So let's get going. Looks like we got a, a, re a repeat, one of our, what are, we, what are you, regulars? Dr. Kudos, Neil. Hey Paul, continuing with my oddball assistance exercise request. Great, I love it. I have a lateral raise video for you to critique, okay? This might be the first one of these. Uh, compared to the sample video on your website, I'm not keeping my arms as level as you. My forearms flare upward. Yes, this is a very common thing where we see guys go out and up. Um, I'm not sure how to fix that. This exercise feels awkward to me. All right, well, let's take a look and see what it looks like. And uh, we'll see if we can offer some useful advice. Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> so we'll watch a few of these and then I'll comment. So this is a very common mistake that people make with lateral raises, they sort of end up with the the like up and flaring out like this instead of, you know, the old school way that bodybuilders used to coach this lift would be to say, imagine you're holding two jugs of milk and you're trying to pour them out. Okay, so the, the idea is that at the top, you want your hand and your elbow kind of aligned or sometimes even the elbow a little bit higher than the hand or sorry yes the elbow a little bit higher than the hand um, what you don't want to be is like this because that's then you're going up and back and it's taking the stress off of the you know lateral uh, deltoid so the easiest way to think about this is if, if you're having and I know a lot of guys get stuck on this so the easiest thing to do is just start with your hands directly by your sides palms facing you hands down by the hips. You don't even have to bring them in front of you. You can just put them by the hips with light weight. And then you're just gonna push your hands straight up, like just out to the walls. And when you get to the top, your hand will go from facing, your hands will go from facing each other to facing the floor. So at full extension, your palm is gonna be perpendicular to the floor. So you're coming here and just straight up like this. Okay, now you want, you'll have a little bend in your elbow, but if you're struggling with it, you can keep your elbow perfectly straight and you just bring it straight up like this, okay? So start at the side and then just up to shoulder level and back down. Um, it's an assistance exercise. So with these, it's okay to use a little bit of momentum, right? So you can go, you know, if you keep them in front of you, you can get a little bit of like hip extension to get them going you have to monitor how excessive that gets. You don't want to start using your low back to lift the weight. So typically with lateral raises, we keep them very, very light. You don't need a lot of weight to get a really good burn in the deltoids. Okay. So lightweight. And then, you, like I said, once you're comfortable with going from, you know, a neutral 
palms facing each other to perpendicular to the floor, right? We're just not going back like this. We don't want any shoulder rotation here, or we don't want to lift the forearm at all. It's just out. It goes from facing this way to facing the floor. Okay. And then you can bring them in front of you and just sort of, you know, once you got the hang of it. Now, the other thing to think about is that you're leading with the elbow. So imagine you have like a string pulling up on your elbow like this. So this is the thing that's being carried up. Almost like if you think about the lateral machines with the big pads, you're here and you're really pushing from here. You're not pushing from your hand. So this is what's leading, it's what's carrying the weight up, okay? This point right here, the elbows. So you're here and you're up like that. And that's really it. I mean, it's a pretty, it, it's one of the ones that trips me up that people get so confused about it because it's a fairly simple exercise, but I know it's a common thing. So I think if we look at, I think I have a video of me doing these somewhere. Let me see if I can pull that up and I'll just, you'll see what I mean. There I am. Oh, so let's see if I can make this a little bigger. So you can see at the top, my elbow and my hand are pretty much in the same line, right? In your version, you would kind of look like that. So that's not what we want. So you just palms point directly down at the floor at the top and you're leading from the elbow. Let me see if I can. So I'm thinking about driving this part like pulling up that way. Okay. And oh, I guess I lost it. Where is that again? Sorry, I'm working with different gear here. And in this version, I'm using a little bit of hip extension just to get it going, trying to keep it minimal, trying to keep the stress on the shoulders. Um, if you really start swinging, cut the set, you're done. Okay. If you start cheating too much, that kind of goes for all assistance exercises. Um, but yeah, just work on that and see, uh, you might want to, you definitely want to bring your feet a little closer together. Okay. You don't want to be out that wide, especially if you're starting with your hands directly by your hips, right? I mean, your, your stance can be very narrow for these. Okay. And then just make sure that at the top of the rep, your elbow is higher and your palm is facing down and you have a tiny little bend in your elbow. Like, you know, if that's fully locked, maybe just like a little bit. Okay. Give it a shot. And like I said, if you're still struggling, just keep your arms straight and just push them straight out to the sides and you'll be good to go. Cool. That was a fun one. Let's keep going. Um, hey, Paul, this is John. How's my deadlift? All right. Let's see. Uh, my weakness is typically getting on the balls of my feet or my toes versus staying on my heels. The other weakness is trying is uh, my hips rise too soon on the way up before my knees unbend or straighten. Okay. I'm using a low handle and not the high handle on the bar. I use minimal heel shoes. I think the trap bar has helped improve these weaknesses. I switched to the trap bar because I'm not doing powerlifting competitions until I'm 65 years old when I might have a chance to win. <laughs> You're not even going to compete unless you have a chance to win. <laughs> okay. Next time I'll post a video with an angle from the front. I'll wear shorts and lighter colors so you can see the knee and hip angle better. All right. Well, I'll take a look, but we need to talk about the, the conventional deadlift because that is really what I want you to do. So let's see here. I don't have, I mean, I've co I've used trap bar deadlifts with in very rare occasions. I mean, I have one, I mainly use it for shrugs. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second, but Okay. Um, so these look okay, but you know, you, you, you're a little bit on the balls of your feet. The solution to that is just rocking back onto your heels a little bit. The, the thing with the trap bar deadlift and the reason that we don't use it is because, well, the reason that a lot of people do use it, a lot of trainers is because they don't know how to coach a deadlift. It's very hard to, sometimes it's hard to teach someone to set their back. It's challenging. That's an uncomfortable position to be in. And um, a lot of times people have a hard time learning how to set their back. And a lot of trainers don't know how to coach that. So hang on, I've got to 
big uh, weed whacker outside or something. <laughs> okay, I think it's gone. Um, a lot of coaches don't know how to solve that problem. And so it's easier to teach someone how to trap bar deadlift because they don't have to set their back or it's not as hard to set your back because you can drop your hips lower, which, good Lord, what the hell is that? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's like a plane going by or something. Anyway, we're making the best of it. Um, so if you can lower your hips because the bar isn't blocking your shins, right? A traditional barbell isn't blocking your shins. You can drop your butt and that slacks the hamstring tension and gives you more room to set your back or to extend your lumbar spine, right? It's not as hard to set your back uh, with the hips lower, which is why people use it because they, again, they don't know how to solve the problem. Um, but the problem is you're turning your deadlift into a squat. And if you're doing the program or any good strength training program, you already squatted. We already covered that. So the more that you lower your hips, the more you're going to turn the deadlift into a squat and you're sort of, you know, it's like overkill. You're, why are you squatting twice basically? So the goal with the deadlift is to work your back. And the best way to do that is with a conventional deadlift with a regular barbell with the hips up nice and high. And then you just have to learn how to set your back. Okay. And it's challenging, right? It, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of work to learn how to do it if you don't know how to, you know, engage those spinal erectors correctly with the hips that high and all that hamstring tension, but it can be learned. I don't have any clients that I've worked with who have to trap bar deadlift. There are times when I will use it, um, someone rehabbing from an injury or something like that, but, or someone who has a heart, has an issue with squatting, like an older person, who has, who just like, they cannot get a bar on their back and we have to, you know, find a way to work their lower body and, you know, do an exercise that sort of mimics the squat, then we'll use the trap bar deadlift. But for someone who can already squat, you got to learn how to do a conventional deadlift because you're going to get, I mean, the point of that exercise is to work your back in a way that the squat doesn't. Okay. So I would like to see from you is your crack at a conventional deadlift. And I'd rather us work on that than, you know, a trap bar deadlift because it's, it's suboptimal. And I think you're capable. I know you're squatting already with a, I think you use a safety squat bar, but I don't think there's a reason that you can't do a regular deadlift. You just have to be coached properly. So I'm here to help you with that. If you want to try and throw up a video of your conventional deadlift, we can iron out the kinks on that and you will be, much better off using that lift. So let me just go back to your comment and make sure I, I covered this. So I'm using the low handle, not the high handle. I use minimum. I think the trap bar has helped improve these weaknesses. Um, you know, weight distribution on the foot, you know, knees and like the way that you fix an error with a lift is you fix it with the lift you're trying to use. <laughs> So if you don't, if you have an issue with the normal deadlift, the trap bar deadlift is going to teach you how to get better at trap bar deadlifting. It's not going to fix the problems that you have with the conventional deadlift because you're avoiding them. Okay. And so the way that you deal with it is you learn how to conventional deadlift correctly, like I said. Um, and I think you should do it. I think we should, I think you should throw up a video next week and we should try and work the kinks out of that one. Um, and you switch because you're not doing powerlifting competitions until you're 65 years old. Um, I think you should also get into a powerlifting competition soon. You know, just get some practice. Why not? You might not win, but who cares? Just get in there and get the experience. And then when you, you know, most people don't win their first powerlifting meet. And, but they're just fun. They focus your training. They give you a reason to train hard and be consistent. And plus you get practice. You get the butterflies out. And then by the time you're, 65 and you know you're going to be a, a seasoned power lifter so there's no reason you shouldn't do a power lifting meet just go in with the expectations of you're going to have a fun day you're going to try you're going to meet some cool people you're going to try and set some prs and maybe you win sometimes and maybe you don't um, but there's no reason to avoid them if you have the urge to compete and i don't know how old you are so maybe 65 is like a couple months away but um you know the the trap bar deadlift is fine what you're doing here, your form looks okay. 
I think a better use of your time, especially if you intend on competing, you want to start dialing in. You want to spend some time practicing the conventional deadlift because you're not going to trap bar deadlift at the meet. So avoiding fixing any issues that you have is just going to delay the time that you have to get better at it. So that's your homework. Give me a set of your conventional deadlift next week or whenever you get around to it. And let's try and dial that in so that whenever you decide it's meet time, you're ready to go. Your form's locked in and then it's just a matter of programming. Okay. But thank you for posting. It's, it's always good to, you know, see different lifts and, and I'm just happy you're participating. So let's, uh, let's get that regular dead or conventional deadlift dialed in. All right, man, let's move on to the next guy. We got Drew Kima. Drew Kima. All right. Um, okay. We got a lot here. <laughs> Hi, Paul. In late November, I posted a squat uh, form check where I was having balance issues at 275 coming forward into and out of the bottom. You recommended deloading and incorporating pause squats. For some background, I started in starting strength in uh, February of 2022. I spent most of 2023 trying to fix the squat. I deloaded multiple resets, uh, but I, let's see, but it seems like I just, like I'm just stepping back to run the same, to run to the same wall at 240 to 250. Yes, oftentimes resetting in if in the absence of a like huge technique error is is kind of a waste of time. But if you have to fix something and I don't remember your previous one, then you might have to deload and then hopefully you blow past it. Since last May, I've incorporated pause squats into my warm-up set, but it seems like once there's real weight on muscle memory re reverts to bad habits. Given this mess, <laughs> I'm not sure what mental cues to use anymore, or what programming to go with. I backed off from 245 to 275 and still felt the same issue. And so I decided to go more nuclear and go down to 205, really focusing on bending over, shoving the knees out and bringing the hips down. Uh, this was the initial video you reviewed at 275. Thank you for any advice you can give. We live in the middle of nowhere and don't have the budget for online coaching, so it's much appreciated. Yep, happy to help. Okay. Let's see if this is the new one and then we'll go back and maybe visit the old one. So this is two, oh, okay. So this is 205, you went way down. All right, let's take a look. Bar placement's good, stance looks good. Let's see the movement. Oh, wow. You really, yeah. <laughs> you dropped down way too fast there and you lost your balance. So. You got to control it on the way down. Okay, you're going down, you're going kind of up and forward. Let me take a few of these in. Better, it's a better rep. Oh, these are getting much cleaner. You're kind of finding your groove here. Nice, all right. Again, I, I think you figured it out, so I don't really have to hammer you on that. But that first one, the cadence was very slow, and then you just kind of dropped, right? And obviously, when you get loose, you lose control, and you lost your balance on the way up. Let me see the 275 one, just as a little refresher here. And uh, mm, I think I remember you. Not bad. Yeah, the tiny bit, like a little bit of knee cave. All right. One more here. Yeah, you're cutting depth off a little bit and losing your, your balance. So, um, Let's go back to the newer one. So I think you're kind of overthinking this and I think you're taking too much weight off the bar unnecessarily. Um, and I get it. I've been there. You know, you, you're trying to fix these things and it's frustrating and you keep getting stuck with some form errors. And so you keep deloading, but there's a, you know, the, what's the saying? Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. If you continue to deload, so it's perfect in your head, you're never gonna fix the thing. You're, you're always gonna be resetting. And sometimes you need the heavy weight to feel when you do it correctly and when you don't. The contrast at lightweight, you, might, you can get away with murder at lightweight. At heavier weights, 
it's very obvious when you have a form error because you know it, the bar speed will slow down dramatically versus if, when you lock it in at a heavy weight, it's, it feels a lot better. So sometimes you just got to push through and keep going and work and hope that the technique errors correct themselves or you can feel the difference. Okay. So, but we'll deal with 205. The main thing in both of those lifts that I noticed the both videos is that you're not leaning over enough soon enough. So if we watch your back angle on the way down, you're going to, you're going to try and stay upright like way too long. Okay. That's the one where you got out of it. So everything looks good here. And I noticed, Oh, you've got the, the tubo there for your knees. So that one was down and forward. And again, this is a byproduct of not establishing the back angle soon enough. Okay. Your weights on your heels right here. So you're starting. That's another. There's a couple things going on. All right. You're starting with your weight back on your heels too much. Okay. So the only where to go from there is you're just going to keep sitting back too much. You want to start with the weight balanced over the middle of the foot. So you want even pressure across the surface of the foot. You should feel it here and you should feel it on the balls of the feet even. Right here, you've got all your weight back from the very start. Like you can see your toes are almost lifting up. So even though you're going to push your knees forward, you're still back, your weight's still back too much and you're not balanced and everything's going to be, you're basically going to be falling backwards. And so you, it's going to, a whole cascade of issues are going to happen from that if you're not, if you're not starting in a balanced position. So the first thing to fix is, and I have another client who's a very strong lifter and he has this tick too. So I have to remind him, okay, when you lock out before you start the rep, the last thing you're going to do is shift your weight forward a little bit. So you have some pressure on the balls of your feet and some pressure on the heels. It should be even. Okay. So let's get the start position, right? Everything else looks good. You just got to shift your weight a little bit more forward. Then the goal is to maintain that balance all the way down, all the way up. That pressure gradient doesn't change. Okay. And you have to move your hips and your knees lean over to facilitate that. Right. So let's keep going here. Oh, I got my little thing on. So your knee, if you notice your knee isn't even getting, I mean, this thing's kind of blocking me, but it looks like your knee isn't even getting to that pipe or that, that, uh, foam roller because all your weight is back the entire time. It get, oh, it gets there a little bit at the bottom. Okay. So it slides cause it's going to go there. You know, we talked about knee slide before. And this is so light that you don't even have to hip drive like adequately, or you can kind of just come straight up and maintain this more vertical back angle. Let me see 275 again and, and check your, hip drive on this. All right, let's fast forward a little bit. Again, your weight is back on your heels. So you've got to get some more pressure on the balls of your feet, right? So that's what happens. If your weight is back, the knees don't get forward. Eat, you know, you might shove them forward, but every, all your weight is back towards your heels. And then they're going to slide forward at the bottom and carry you forward. So you're going to go down, and as you drive up, you're going to go forward onto your toes. If you keep it balanced, you have a much better chance, or you keep that pressure gradient even, toes and heels, you got a much better chance of just coming straight up and down. So fixing the foot position, or the foot, the pressure on the foot, see that's the same thing, down and forward. So right here, before you go, just, just shift the pressure onto your toes a little bit. You know, and it'll probably feel wrong because what you think is right is wrong. So you got to make it feel wrong to be right. Follow that logic. <laughs> um, but it'll feel like you've got a little bit your weight a little too far forward at first. But hopefully with time and practice, it'll become you'll reprogram what right feels like. OK, so that's the first one. And then. And so in that case, the bar's rolling up on your back because we talked about thoracic extension. You start rounding as you drive, right? So you go down and forward, the bar rolls up your neck. You can't maintain that, that thoracic extension. So you start to round, it rolls, 
your back starts to flex more, you lift your chest too soon, it's the whole deal. But it really comes from, I mean, that is too heavy for you right now with this form. So it is good, but I wouldn't have deloaded to 205. I think you could hold it uh, a little bit higher than that with more weight. Okay, so the second thing is getting the, uh, getting your back angle correct. So if we go to the first one, that's the, that's the one where you kind of lost your balance. So we'll skip that one. And I think they just get continuously get better as you go through the set. No hip drive on that one. And, but you are holding, like you are holding your chest up better here. So that's an improvement. You're pushing into your quads on that one instead of the, instead of using the hips. Let's see this one, the last one. Yeah. So if you notice the hip drive here isn't very pronounced. So let me see if I can mark it for you, right? From this position out of the bottom, I want to see this move first. Okay. If this is your butt, you come out of the bottom, I want to see this. Now, not this, right? Don't drop your chest. I just want to see a little pop here that shows me you started the drive up at the hips. I don't want to see these two points, the shoulders and the hips, come up perfectly. I want to see hips first and then the shoulders follow along, just a little pop here, okay? And I don't want to see the shoulders come back first or the chest lift first. I want to see a little pop and then that angle locks back in. And if you watch what you're going to do, it's very even. There's like almost no hip drive there. See, you're already perfect hips and shoulders, okay? It should be hips first a little bit, just a little, and not at the expense of the back angle. Don't shove your butt up and drop your chest because the bar is going to roll up on your neck. You just push harder down here at the hips. You push with the legs to get it going, and then you open up your hips later. But Aside from fixing the balance issue, the main thing you need to do is get leaned over sooner, like I said earlier. So let's look at you kind of halfway down, right? Like here, I would, I, I think you're gonna, you're gonna need to be a little bit more horizontal, okay? So from the top, your weight's balanced over the middle of your foot, you're just gonna try and stamp your chest between your toes, okay? You're gonna try and touch your sternum right here, right down here between your feet, okay? So you just look at the floor, lean the hell over, push your legs out, push your knees out of the way so you can get down there and try and get this point closer to that spot on the floor. Just get leaned over, okay? And this is another thing you can practice with lightweight pause squats is making sure that you're as leaned over as you can be and yet still fully balanced. And that will, to lean over like that, your hips will stretch back more, You'll get more of a rebound and then out of the bottom you'll be able to tap into that hip drive a little bit better so you're just trying to keep you're just trying to stay a little too vertical here and let me watch it the last two one more time yeah so you're just hesitating like if we watch how you unlock let me see if i slow this down so if we watch keep an eye on your knees and your hips those two joints unlocking it should be simultaneous. They should unlock at the same time. The knees should break and the hips should break together. And what you're gonna see is, I think the knees kind of break. Well, let's see. If we watch both joints, you set. So knees are breaking more dramatically first, okay? So they're, and then you start to lean over. You see that? Like look at the point where you actually start changing your back angle to more horizontal, okay? It's, you've already, it's too late, right? Look, you're here, the knees are gonna break, and your, your hips are gonna unlock, but you're gonna keep that chest up, and then you start to lean over a lot more, okay? So I want you, like, knees go forward and out, and chest, you just dive bomb, for the floor, like in your head, just think about a back angle like this, okay? And you know, like I said, with balance over the middle of the foot. So don't let your weight shift on your toes forward and back. Lean over, keep that weight, that pressure even on the toes and the heels, but try and get more horizontal. And practice this on the pause squats. Like go down to the bottom and see how leaned over you can get and be balanced and feel that. Feel the position and then try and get to that position by the halfway point. Okay, let's see here. Let's watch one more. 
like by this point, you should be more horizontal, okay? So your back angle is like this, and I would like to see it more like that, okay? So I want your chest down. Oh, not that way. Let's wait till that line. This goes down here right away, okay? Let's see. Let me make sure there's nothing else I want to critique you on. And you're actually able to get a little deeper than you need to go. So I would widen your stance a little bit. That'll tighten up the adductors a little higher without you even thinking about it. So maybe move your stance about an inch out from where you are. And I think your, your depth, your issue of going too deep, it'll just go away. But overall, the, I mean, this is a better set than, than uh, the, the first one that you showed me, this one. Um, it's just some minor errors, right? Just you're starting, you're, you're starting the whole thing off incorrectly with the weight too, back too much on the heel. So if you just fix that, that'll clean up a lot of this. And then if you just try and lean over more, just touch your chest to the ground and keep that weight, a little bit more weight on your toes, you're going to be good. Okay. So, um, in terms of, but don't reset anymore. Okay. Like no more, we're, we got to get you through, we got to get you past the sticking point of 250. All right. So don't be a stranger on the channel. Like let's get a video. I don't care if you post every week, but I want to see you work up next time to the heavy use, you know, practice what we talked about today. And then when you think you have it, post another video soon and let's get it dialed in so that we don't, you don't go through this cycle where you're just kind of lost and frustrated and constantly resetting. Like I can objectively tell you that's, that's a tolerable, that the amount of error or deviation is acceptable, go up and wait and we can fix it. If, if the problem gets excessive, we might have to take weight off the bar. But if we can get some regular feedback going here, then I don't think you're going to have that problem. Um, you know, aside from gaining weight, there's a limit to how strong you're going to get at a certain body weight, but that's a whole different discussion and that's a personal choice. Um, but, but get in here more frequently and let's get this squat dialed in so that we can get you to 315. Okay. So work on that stuff, post another video soon when you think you got it and we'll just keep going, but we're done resetting. Your form is not like, there's no need to reset further. We can deal with it from here and we got to get you back the other way soon. So, uh, hang in there, man. I know it's frustrating especially with infrequent feedback and stuff like that and trying to figure it out on your own when you're going through this for the first time. So use me, okay? This, I do this for a reason. It's fun. Um, and um, I want to help you I help you set some PR soon, man. So keep your head up, keep working on it, and post another video soon and we'll keep going. All right, let's move on. What do we got? Toxic Avenger. Last week, you reviewed my squat fail. <laughs> Much of it had to do with my bottom position, depth, and too much in my knees, but you also mentioned leaning over sooner, just like the last guy. Here is a set of pause squats. I tried to over cue weight in the heels so that I can reach back enough. Seem to get a lot of lumbar movement at the bottom, butt wink. Butt wink's not a thing. We'll talk about that um, and worry. This will recreate low, pain, low back pain I had I recently got over is my face on the floor. <laughs> I'm sure it sure feels like it. Okay. Or felt like it. Okay. Um, butt wink is dude. All right. Okay. Wait, I mean, you're deep, man. That's a lot deeper than you need to go. So the solve for that, nice. Be that was a beautiful rep. It's a beautiful rep. These look great. Okay, so let's talk about a couple things. So you that your debt you're still like that depth is excessive. Okay, this is the top of your knee. This is your hip crease. So you're coming down like this. And what we want is just kind of like barely breaking, par like just below parallel. Okay, you don't need to be down here. The good news is this is a ridiculously simple issue to fix. You don't even have to do anything except move your stance out a little wider. Okay, so just like I talked about in the last form check, 
right before yours. If you move your feet out a little wider, it'll, it'll set the full stretch of the adductors up. It'll, it'll finish, they'll hit the limit of their stretch a little bit higher up and that you'll just feel that that's the natural bottom. If you keep your knees out, you literally can't go any deeper. Okay. So easy fix, bring your, I'd say two inches on each foot and this depth, this excessive depth problem will go away. So we don't have to deal with that. Um, but let's watch, let's watch the, the rest of the set and see. Okay. So that one was, you kind of came up into your quads. So when I'm, let me see. Yeah. You're, if I was behind you and I wanted to illustrate this point, I would put my hands right here under your butt. Okay. And I've done this with many clients <laughs> right under your butt with, you know, with like an empty bar. And I would just throw it real hard like that. Just push it up like that. And to show you, that's what it should feel like. The hips should shoot up first. Okay. And you're kind of relying a little bit too much on the quads here, which happens a lot. So you can see it's a very subtle like shift forward, like the stress goes into the, or the work goes into the knees a little bit onto the quads. And you want to push with your quads instead of driving your butt up. Okay. Little tick on that one, but let's see if you fix it here. That was much better, right? I'm looking at your hips, your, your, your low back. Let's see weight distribution at the bottom. If you end up shifting around during that pause. No, these are great. Yeah. So you're getting, that's the point of the pause squat, right? Is to get, is to feel that that was a great one right? To, to sort of notice the difference between rep to rep. And then with each pause squat, you try and correct the previous error so that by the time you get to the end of the set, there's nothing to correct because you just nailed it. But it gives you an opportunity when you're down there to feel the, the shift in weight, to feel how you come up or, or the difference between when you're coming up using hip drive and when you're coming up trying to basically like quad it up. Um, Good. I think you can sit, you could have a little bit more, meh, no, no, that was a real good one. Let's see one more. Sit back and drive your ass. Yeah, you're, you're sitting back. So the, my correction was going to be to have you sit back a little bit more, but you fixed it on the other ones, which is exactly the point. So that was excellent, like excellent work. Let me see. Aside from widening the stance, like I said, which is an easy fix, uh, there's not a whole lot to correct there. So much of it had to do with the bottom position, depth, too much into the knees, right? So on the first rep, we kind of saw that going into the knees part on the way up. It was very subtle. We could slow it down. You could see the, just a little shift, um, but then you fixed it on the later reps. You stayed back in your hips. You drove your butt up more. So I tried to key weight on my heels so that I reached back. It seems like I got some lumbar move. Okay. So the butt wink thing, butt wink is only a thing. And that what, what you're talking about is, um, lumbar flexion. So you'll see, like, we're talking about this lumbar extension here. And if you have someone who's unloaded with no weight on their back, and they try and go too deep. So these are kind of tied together, which is why you might be feeling that. If you shove your knees out and keep your back in rigid extension, right, and your stance is right, the you will hit depth at the limit of the adductor's ability to stretch. Okay, so if your if your stance is correct and you lean over and you keep your lumbar spine in rigid extension, you lock the pelvis, right, and you shove your knees out. When you get to the point that you can't go any deeper, that should be the bottom. Right. And that's where that stretch reflex is. So butt wink happens when you try and go deeper than you need to, because if you've hit the limit of the stretch, right, the only way to go to get any lower than that is to let the spine round into flexion or to have the knees cave in and slack the adductor. So if you let the knees cave, you can drop down. And if you let your lumbar spine round, you slack the tension and you can get a little bit deeper. Those are, those are errors. That's incorrect. You don't need to do that. So that's why I don't want you going any lower than the bottom. 
Okay. Because you have to compromise your form and that defeats the purpose of the movement. We just need you to go low enough to hit all the muscle mass we want to hit, get that bounce and come back up and you will protect your low back. Spinal flexion under load, yeah, it's going to irritate your back. Um, so if you're feeling that or if you're worried about that, it's related to the fact that you're going too deep, right? So you don't have to go that deep. And even though in this case, it's like, not really unlocking that much. Now, here's the deal. Uh, there, there are guys who, like if you look at, that's a good shot right there. Look at the amount of extension you have here, that curve, right? So a lot, we, most men have a hard time overextending their lumbar spine. Women can do it very easily and they have a tendency because they can do it so easily, they're more flexible to have more back issues. But with guys, they usually can't even, they have a hard time extending like just to a neutral anatomical amount, like the amount that we want that's safe, that's good. So we have to hammer, you know, setting your back or to like beat that into them. But a guy like you, every once in a while, we, we get a guy who naturally can overextend his lumbar spine. He can really like overdo it instead of just holding it flat in like a neutral position. And with guys like you, you basically have too much extension. I mean, and so what's happening as you get to the bottom is it's moving from overextended into neutral. Neutral is what we want. So you're actually, the, the movement that you're feeling, is it going from an overextended position into the normal, neutral, correct position? But it's not butt link, it's not going into flexion. Okay, it's going from overextended to flat, not curved, not rounded. Okay, but it feels like that to you because, you know, you think that this is actually the neutral position and this is not. This is okay. I mean, it's nice and, and it's going to, you know, I imagine your deadlift is going to be, you have an easy time, easier time than most setting your back. Um, but you can ignore that sensation because you do not have butt wink. And the thing about butt wink is you'll see that lumbar flexion. Uh, when someone squats an empty bar and the minute you put weight on it, the minute you put 95 pounds on it, it just goes away. So we don't even talk about it. It's not a thing because, and it's, that's why you don't spend a lot of time coaching an empty bar set because you're going to see a bunch of shit that as soon as you put weight on, as soon as they go to their first warm up with weight, the errors just go away. They just correct themselves. And lumbar flexion is one of those things. So we don't even talk about it. In fact, Rip used to yell at us if anybody mentioned butt weight. You don't have butt wink and, and any sensation that you're feeling, like I said, is just going into that flat. See, it's still flat at the bottom. It's just, it's just less <laughs> overextended when it feels like you think that feels like flexion. It's not, that's still a perfectly flat back. Okay. But as you continue to go deeper, you might, it might continue to round because that's the only way that you're going to get deeper unless you let the knees cave in. So if you widen your stance, and you keep your knees out and you lean over, as soon as you feel that like you're at the limit of your ability to go any deeper, that's where that bounce is, right? You come back up. Don't try and go deeper than that, right? It's unnecessary. You're at the bottom, okay? So we'll get the stance right. So just widen it and, and then don't worry about it because you're, you're not in a... Let me see if you're actually like actively... Yeah, you're, it doesn't look like you're, some guys you'll see them kind of do this anterior pelvic tilt before they go down, but you're not. You just sort of have a naturally curved low back and, and then it kind of pulls into its normal position. So don't worry about it. Just fix the depth by widening the stance and keep doing this because these look fantastic, okay? So let's get one with the depth cut off a little higher and and if you want to feel the difference in the depth, you can start doing the bounce pause squats where you go down there and pause and then you rebound up and down a few times, bounce, 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 and then you come up and that'll kind of, you'll get a sense, especially when you watch the video, are you, are you getting, is that stretch reflex below the sort of bottom position that we want? If you're getting a bounce like way too deep, then you know, you need to widen your stance even more. Okay. So you can do it find that bounce. And if that bounce has your hip crease kind of bouncing up and down like an inch below parallel, 
that's where we want it. If it's way down here and, and you have to go all the way to that point to feel the bounce, widen your stance a little more, okay? But nothing about this says, well, to go back to your thing of, of you know, being concerned about frequent back tweaks and stuff like that, guy, like I said, guys who and women who uh, can naturally overextend their spine, they have to be very careful because it, you, it's much easier to injure your back with overextension than flexion. Okay, so flexion isn't your problem. It might be overextension because you have these little facet joints on the anterior side of your spine, like your, the back of your spine, and there's not a lot of clearance between the, those overlapping facet joints. So when they go into flexion, they kind of open up. It's designed, your spine is designed to round into flexion. That's why the cushion of the disc is fatter at the front than in the back because you want more padding when you're reaching over to pick up a boulder or something like that. The other way, there's not a lot of clearance. So, you, so if you overextend, those facet joints kind of smash into each other and they could fracture or you can just piss off the capsule in there and you get a lot of problems with overextension. So um, if you're a guy who has frequent back tweaks like that, one of the things you can do is just make sure that you always wear your belt. Like there's no downside to wearing it for your warmups. Keep it on, keep it tight because it'll cue, it'll remind you to engage your abs. And the abs are what stabilize the spine, the lumbar spine from the front. So if you contract the abs, it pulls your spine into that neutral position or it should and, and prevents it from overextending too much. So like if we, if I'm working with a dancer, like a female dancer and I'm teaching her a deadlift and I tell her to set her back, it's like way too much. And I have to not even cue her to set her back and just cue her to squeeze her abs. And that pulls the extension back to neutral more. So the belt will kind of remind you to contract your abs in all of these exercises. I mean, not except the bench press, but uh, you know, overhead press, squat, deadlift, keep that belt on just as a reminder and keep your foot, don't worry about extending your low back because it's just gonna, your normal position is already like enough. So all you have to do is think about bracing instead of overextending. I guess that's the better way to say it is don't actively try and arch your back. And this only applies to guys like you. Like most guys, you have to yell at them like, dude, arch. Like I want you to try and turn your back into a U shape and maybe we'll get them close to neutral. In your case, if you're already there and if I tell you to overextend or you think about you've heard you know, a lot of coaches say you got to like arch your back, arch your back. You're going to go into a position of overextension and you're going to have a lot of back problems. So you think about abs, you think about bracing, think about taking your breath and squeezing your abs. Your back will be fine and it'll be more protected that way. So keep going, man. These look good. Like those, those last few reps on the pause squat look fantastic. So let's keep working on it. And, uh, I'll look forward to seeing something heavier. Okay. All right. Long shot. Let's see here. Uh, I think we're getting re you ready for a meet, if I'm not mistaken. We've got a separate thread for uh, an upcoming powerlifting meet. I think we got like two weeks left or something. Anyway, uh, 275 pounds by three. It's not my top set. Recording issues for that one. Trust me, I get it. Um, but for form check purposes, might be worth a look. Let's see, Rob. All right, Rob. Let's let's see. I hope to God you're hitting depth on these because if you're not. We're going to, your meat prep is going to take a turn. <laughs> All right. Oh, good Lord. Rob, Rob. Jesus, man. All right. All right. So depth, it's the opposite of what I was concerned about. You're, you're going way deeper than you need to go. Like way deeper. And, um, so we don't have a depth issue on the, in other words, you're not going to get red lighted for cutting it off six inches high. Okay. Let's, let me get another look at this here. You're going down real fast. So one of the things is your cadence, right? And when you go to this meet, you're going to see, hopefully you will see some elite power lifters there with a lot of weight, you know, sometimes six, seven, 800 pounds. And you will watch how slowly they lower that bar. Because if, if you drop as quickly as you're dropping here, you have to be loose. To be fast, you have to be loose, okay? And loose is sloppy, right? Because loose means you, as, as you start to need to drive back up, you've got momentum, first of all, because you're dropping and bouncing and you're trying to retighten everything. You've let go of the tightness and you're trying to retighten it under load. 
it's not a fall into the bottom. It's a stretch. You In the bench press, you pull the bar down to your chest. You don't drop it and then try and tighten up, right? In the squat, you control the descent, slow and controlled on the way down, right? So you keep it in the groove because if you've got one of those guys that's like an 800 pound squatter and he gets that bar an inch out of the groove, dude, it's like, he, he he's just gonna dump it. You can't get away with that, okay? So slow and controlled on the way down, keep it right in the slot and then hit the bounce and then fast and explosive on the way up. That's what we, that's where you focus the, the juice is you, you, you stretch down into the bottom relatively slowly, right? Control it and then once you feel that stretch reflex, then you can explode, okay? And you'll still be tight because you're, as you stretch back, you know, think about pulling on a rubber band, right? The harder you pull on the rubber band, the more you pull the rubber band back, the harder it is to pull it back even more, if that makes sense, right? Here, when it's not stretched, you can pull it pretty easily, right, and quickly. But as you max out the stretch on that rubber band, pulling it even further and further gets harder and slower, okay? That's what's happening to your groin muscles, like your adductors on the way down in the squat. You should be stretching them progressively so that as you reach the limit of the stretch in the bottom, it's harder and slower to go even deeper because it's, you know, you've got a lot more tension fighting you. Okay. If you're, if it's speeding up into the bottom, that means you, the rubber band is relaxed and you're not going to get any pop. You're not going to get that stretch reflex. Okay. So the fact that you can drop this quickly means you're just loose and falling and then trying to tighten up later versus, you know, again, with the bench press, stretching out the rubber bands in the pecs and then bam, then you fire up, right? Squat, stretch down and then shoot it up, okay? So let's watch this again. Hip drive looks good. Okay, so aside from just slowing down the descent, and it's not actually as bad as I thought it was. It's a, it's a decent cadence. Um, but the fact that you can get, you know, it, it's a little faster than I want it to be, but not the end of the world here. And I bet you when you go to your heavier weight, um, it just kind of slows down anyway. But that is like insanely deep. Okay. So let me see. Where's my, oops, I missed it. Let's see if I can catch the bottom again. Okay. So like there's the top of your kneecap. This is your hip crease. We got a line like that. Okay. And depth really is kind of this. So that's a whole bunch of depth that you don't need. Okay. And again, if you watch the form check I did just before this one, in order to get that deep, you usually have to sacrifice something. And in your case, it might be letting your knees cave in, although they don't look like they are. Um, you might just be one of these guys who's very flexible or what's more likely is that your stance is way too narrow. Okay. So the good news about the depth issue, like I said, in the last form check is that the fix is, is you don't even have to think about it. All you got to do is widen your stance, right? Because if we widen your stance, the limit of the adductors stretch, the ability to, they'll hit their end point higher up and you'll just feel like you're at the bottom without even thinking about it. Okay. So let me see if I can get your, we'll watch this walk out. Now, okay. Yeah, so you're not getting much of a pop. You're just kind of going down and driving up, going down and driving up. And it's because I think you're, I think it's your stance. I think your heels are too close together. The hip drive's good. Bar position's good. I mean, everything here looks good. It's, it's a little bit more controlled aggression. Okay, like I know you, you you get amped up when you're lifting. When you get amped up excessively, things get sloppy. So you wanna you wanna deploy your aggression like surgically. Exactly. You wanna be controlled and calm. And then at the moment that you need that fire, that's when you hit it. But you don't wanna be amped up the entire set for the entire rep because you're you got too many things on your mind, right? It's it's just chaos and it's gonna get sloppy. So the place where you need that fire is 
after the bounce. Gravity takes care of the way down. You lean over, you get your stance right, bounce will take care of itself. Then you want to explode. But if you're like ready and psyched up the whole time, you're going to be wobbly and shaky and your, your focus is going to be, you're going to be focused on too many things at once. Okay. So calm down a little bit and, you know, control the aggression, control the weight on the way down and then hit the bounce and then drive up. But like the way that you're, st the speed with which you start that next rep, like you get up and you're just like, I'm doing it. Like, let's go, <laughs> let's go. Even so you're holding it together pretty well. Okay. So I'm, I'm making comments here for you. And then kind of more generally for the, the everybody else watching, like the, you're not bad here. Okay. And, and like I said, the good news is you're not going to get red lighted for depth. And the fix is simple. You just, so here you want to be, you want to get set. You want to lock your knees out. You want to take a breath. You want to be tight. And then you're going to slowly lower the weight under control. You're going to hit the bounce and drive back up hard and then get Zen again. So here you calm down again, you breathe, you refocus, you retighten, and then you go into the next rep, control, and then explode. Okay, so it's these this ebbing and flowing, these peaks and valleys of calmness, you know, re as relaxed as you can be with a bunch of weight on your back, uh, and then, you know, aggressive explosion, and then calmness, right, and then aggression, okay? It's not just like aggression the whole time, you get me? So, yeah, okay, good. This makes me happy. These are great. Um, widen the stance. Just, I think you're probably gonna go, it's hard to tell with this camera angle, but I would say you're gonna have to bring your feet out maybe three, two, three inches on each side. So what you wanna do to figure this out is just set up your camera or have someone watch you and you're looking for, let me see if I can pause it, like there. That's pretty good right there, okay? So if you look at this line right here, and it's so hard to draw this with my finger. Okay, that that's depth. Like that's good depth for you. So what you're gonna do is with the empty bar, um, or maybe with like 95 pounds, you're just gonna widen your stance and go down and do like a pause squat, just sit at the maximum, you know, get as deep as you can with the correct form with the knees shoved out, low back and extension, leaned over, balanced, and then just take it down and pause where you think you're at the limit of your ability to go lower without letting the knees cave in or the lumbar spine go into flexion. Okay. And then, and then if you're doing it by yourself, come back up, widen your stance a little bit more, go down and stop at where you feel the maximum stretch. And then pick the one and look at it and find the one where the limit is here, okay? And then that's the stance you're gonna use. It'd be help, more helpful if you had a friend who could just be like, who knows what they're doing and could tell you, this is the stance with you need for this to be the bottom versus like, that position versus that. I mean, that's like, you're like six inches too deep. This is exactly the opposite of what I was afraid of, that you're going to be six inches high and you're like six inches too deep. The good news is, you know, that's six inches that you don't have to squat this weight. So your ability, like once you get comfortable with it, you're, you know, you're cutting six inches off the range of motion and still legal. And you'll be using more muscle mass because with that stance that narrow, the adductors aren't really hitting a full stretch, which means they're not getting fully utilized. You widen the stance, you get that full stretch. You gotta stretch a muscle to use it, right? You get that full stretch, you're gonna be using more adductor and a shorter range of motion, which is still legit. It's the, it's the range of motion that we want to hit all the muscle mass. So this is a good, this is a good error to have right now because just changing it by widening your stance should put more weight on the bar. Like, again, you don't have to go that far anymore. It'd be like if I told you, you can, you can cut your bench press off here, right? All of a sudden, you're gonna put like 30 pounds on your bench press. So let's work on that, find the right depth and then practice with it. You can mark it, you know, cause you're gonna wanna go back to your normal thing and it's gonna be wider, it's gonna feel weird, but find the, the correct stance that puts the bottom 
that hip crease like just below parallel. And then, and then let's go up from there, calm down a little bit in between, right? Control it a little bit slower on the way down, a little less aggressive, and then use that, like hit it hard on the way up and then refocus, kind of get zen and do it again. But overall, like even if you went into the meet today with this, like it's okay. Like <laughs> if, if your top set is this deep, at least you're not going to bomb out of the meat. Okay. So good. Um, and let's keep going, man. I'm, I'm, we're down to the wire on the meat. So this is, it's game time soon. So thanks for uh, putting that up. It was cool to finally see the squat and uh, we'll keep going. What do we got? Two more. All right. I got to wrap this up soon. <clears throat> Paul, first time posting on the forum, I'm 33, 5'8", and up from 160 to 175, would like to get between 185 and 190. Great. Um, this was my third set of squats at 220. This was the end of my sixth week of the novice linear progression. I've been working, keeping my elbows tight my tor uh, to my torso and bending over, getting the knees forward sooner. I may have cut the fourth or fifth rep off early. Hard to tell on the phone. I appreciate your feedback, sir. All right, let's take a look. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Nice, nice hip drive. You're just dropping a little too quickly. Oh, lifted the chest a tiny bit early, but these are, this is overall, this is very good. Yeah, damn. I think my main complaint is there's not enough weight on the bar. <laughs> that looked like so easy. I think you could have done like 10 of those. Um, all right. So the the main, this is going to be a quick one because overall, like you got stance is good. Grip is good. Bar placement's good. Hip drive's great. Um, angles are good. I think the the main critique I have for you is just that you're going a little bit too fast on the way down, which I just did a rant on in the form check right before you. So you might want to go back and look at that, but um, you're just dropping a little fast, okay? On the descent, you want to control the descent, and it's not much. Very nice. Good. Let's see if I can catch your depth here. Your your pants are a little deceptive here. Let me see if we get it on the last one. It's hard to, so, eh, yeah, you might be a tad high, but it's the camera angles. I think you're okay. Just from having done this enough, if the camera angle is higher than like hip height. So when I'm coaching someone in person, like I will get down on my knee and so that my head is like hip height, because if I stand up, at the top and look down, they're always going to seem high. Like they're, they're, they're going to seem like they're squatting. You have to get down on that level to kind of look directly at their hip. And it's the same thing with the camera. I don't know where your camera is, but if it's elevated above hip height, it's probably going to seem a little bit higher on film than it actually is. So I'm not that worried about it. I don't think if, it, if you're off, you're off, you're barely off. Um, but yeah, I think you just need to slow it down a little bit. So the main, I'll summarize. That one was a little high. Okay, <laughs> let me see your knees. Yeah, that one you went a little forward, like down and forward. You lean over, right? And then, so <clears throat> you're, this is your first time here. So my thing is, as you, the first half of the descent in the squat is knees forward and out. And the second half of the descent is hips back and down. So you lean over, that's a given, you lean way over and knees go forward and out. And then the second half, hips come back and down. The weight on your foot, it should be even the whole time, but it helps to think about toes, heels. So as you lean over and shove your knees forward and out, your weight, you might feel some weight shift to your toes or the balls of your feet, a little. And then as you switch to hips back and down, that weight is gonna shift back towards your heels. Now the net change here is that it stays over the middle the whole time. But conceptually, it helps some of my clients think about toes, heels. So weight on the balls. And then the important thing is, in terms of your depth, is that hips back and down, right? As you get to the bottom, that weight needs to come off the toes and shift back towards the heels. Because if it stays forward, you're never going to hit depth. If your weight 
and your knees are pulling you forward, you're always going to be high. Okay. So if you can sit back onto the heels just a little bit at the bottom, that depth will take care of itself. So just pay attention to the pressure on your foot, right? When you get to the bottom, if you notice that your pressure, the pressure is like on your toes, shift it back to the heels on the next one. And like I always tell people, pause squats. So we haven't talked about pause squats today, really. I haven't pulled up the video, but um, just to find the correct balance position for you and everything is really good on your overall. So this is going to be real easy for you. If you go to hornstrength.com slash videos and look up in the leg section for pause squat on the YouTube video, there's a description with instructions of how to do these and when to do them and all that stuff. So look at that video, but you're basically going to go down and pause for three seconds at the bottom. And you're going to ask yourself in your case, is my weight on my toes, on my heels, balanced in the middle. If it's on your toes, which is gonna be your error if you have one, then you have a three second pause, you shift back, your depth will immediately correct itself when you shift back to the heels. You feel that, oh, this is balance, okay. And then you come back up. And then on the next rep, you go down, you pause for three seconds, and the goal is to be able to go down there without having to shift. So if you notice, okay, the first pause squat, I had to rock back. The second one I'm trying and the third and fourth, I'm trying to go down there and just land in the perfect spot with my weight back just a tiny bit. Okay. So it's like a game. So read that practice those. It won't take you very long. You just need to kind of, you know, ingrain the correct balance position at the bottom and everything will be good. But in terms of the other thing that I noticed was just how quickly you're going down. And again, I highly recommend you watch the form check I did just before you because I did a, a rant on slow and controlled on the way down, fast on the way up, right? If you fall quickly, if you go too quickly, you have to be loose, right? To go fast, you're loose. And loose is sloppy because you have to retighten. But if we think about stretching out the groin muscles on the way down, right? From the top, as you get lower and lower in the squat, those adductors are stretching further and further. It should get slower and harder to get deeper, not faster right? Because the more you pull back, the more you stretch, the harder it becomes to stretch even more because of the increasing tension. So if you're just dropping really quickly, or if it's even speeding up at the bottom, that means you, at some point you're, you weren't tight. You, you don't have that stretch and you're, so you're just kind of rebounding off your knees. Okay. So think about stretching back with the hips, you lean over, you shove your knees out. And then as you shove your butt back, like, and keep leaning over and the hips go back, the groin muscles are tightening out so that as you get to the bottom, you have the maximum stretch and you're going to get that fire. But that process will slow down. Okay. It should not be just like a drop and you're not bad. It's just, I'm trying to find things wrong with your squat. So if anything, I would just say, slow it down a little bit more and focus on feeling that stretch in your groin muscles for the descent. Fix the, make sure you got a, your weight comes off your toes as you get to the bottom and then fire it up and you'll be good to go. These look really good. And let's get some more weight on the bar, man. Like you should be, what is this? Uh, yeah, this is 220. I mean, dude, I feel like I could put 275 on that bar right now and you could do five. So I don't know what your programming is like. And if you want to post on the Reddit thread somewhere else, I'm happy to talk to you about it, but something's going on here. Um, six week of and oh you're only six weeks in okay all right so you're just being cautious but you could i bet you if you get that form dialed in you can make a couple 10 pound jumps real quick and given your form your height if you can get to 190 i mean there's no you should be crushing 315 soon for for sets across so um you have a you have good form and uh, you just need a few little tweaks so keep going Get some more weight on there. Keep posting and, and we'll see if we can get it dialed in, man. But welcome. Happy to have you here. And like, I look forward to seeing more. Maybe we'll take a look at your deadlift. Um, hope it Hopefully it looks as good as the squat. All right. Last one here, guys. I'm losing steam. And of course, it's my man, Dick. Always love to end the show with Dick. That sound. Okay. I got to edit that out. Um, all right. Hey, Paul, keep it short today. This is my deadlift. Any better? 160 kilos for five. Homework, moving off my toes and lowering my hips. Yes, you were like rocking, doing the whole rocking thing last week. I have reduced the amount of swaying forward and back before the pull made sure my shins were touching the bar. Not sure if my hips are low enough yet, but I noticed 
uh, definite difference in keeping the bar in solid contact all the way up. Cheers. All right, Dick, let's wrap it up. Man, I'm like hot. I think my face is all red. All right, here we go. Let's see my man. Let's see how he does today. Okay, come on, Dick. There we go. All right, just watch a few of these and try and breathe. Get the blood, my blood pressure down. Much cleaner. I mean, this definitely less of this excessive. That's where you want to be. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Okay. Keep your, just squeeze your, dude. Yeah. I like it. You're just kind of rocking back on your heels a little bit as you pull. I mean, it's not bad. These are noticeably better than the last time. Oh. Yeah. These look good, man. Let me watch one more time. Let's see if I catch anything else. I, I do have one little comment, but it's not very exciting. Yeah. Okay. So notice on that rep, you kind of keep your chest out over the bar as it comes off the ground. You're kind of covering it. And I think on some of these, you start to sort of swing back a little bit. I might be just tired and seeing things, but I thought, eh, you still look good here. All right, let's get this last one. I think. Yeah. Okay. So the, oh, we got one more. Dude, Nick, Dick's grinding it out here. Yeah. Okay. Much better. Like good work. You nipped all that stuff in the bud real quick. And these are much cleaner, more predictable, less variation in the movement and stuff like that. So, um, I dig it. The only boring criticism that I have or thing that I would be working with you on were we together is just setting your back. And let's see if I can pause it. Yeah, I mean, that there looks pretty good. Talking about obviously the, the lumbar extension here, we kind of want to curve down there or we want it as flat as you can get it. And that's going to vary from guy to guy, but notice it stays pretty flat when you set it that much. So what, what, here's my guess, as you get tired, you're going to stop setting as hard as you could. And because it's not fully set, it's going to unlock easier. It's like thing with the low back is like, if you can lock it, you can set it so hard that it locks. It's really good at staying locked, right? That's what those muscles do. They're isometric. They just hold. I mean, that's their primary function. So if you can max that out, then they'll stay there. Usually. <laughs> um, if you kind of get 90% of that extension, that locking, then they're going to, it's much easier for them to come out because you didn't finish the contraction essentially. So as you go through the set, everybody gets lazier with setting their back. And I have to remind people like, look, know that going into this on rep four and five, you get lazy. So like add another 10% to what you think you should do. Just try and overdo it. And hopefully you can keep locking it as much as you're doing when you're fresh. That one, see, yeah, that one, you kind of just got lazy with it, right? So let's watch how, let's watch the set. Like when you're here, you're gonna set your back. It's eh, you just kind of like eh. It wasn't as hard as it could be. And this is, you know, everybody does this. So you've got a lot of focus on your upper back, like your shoulder area, right? And really what we care about with the, the sensation we're looking for when you're resetting is, so if we watch, if you keep your eyes here, you're going to see a lot of focus on sort of your upper back, but this is the thing that we're trying to get arched. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much. A lot of guys will intentionally round their upper back. It's getting that U shape going here. 
Okay, so you're trying to point this up like this, right, and turn the low back into a U. <clears throat> and often you will see guys get a little mixed up and they all of their focus is on arching their upper back. So, but I think in your case, you just need someone to yell at you, like me. So I'll do it. Um, all right, so let's see how hard you, yeah, that, let's compare that to the first one, okay? So again, I'm keeping my eyes on like kind of right below your belt. And I just want to see how hard you get this contraction. Like that's a, that's, I mean, it's your first rep. So it's obviously going to be the freshest one. And then a lot of upper back movement there, but not too much, you know, you're trying to point your, as we say, you're trying to point your butthole up at the wall. <laughs> And your nipples at the wall. So your nipples go this way, butt goes that way. And the goal is to, for you to think about making that back into the low back into like a U shape. But that's, that's really the issue here is that you can do it. You did it pretty well, or as I think as good as you're going to do it. If I was there, I could dig my fist into your low back and pull up on your chest and we'd probably get a little bit more extension, but the the good the important thing is that on the first rep you've got it pretty locked and you'll notice it stays locked the rest of the reps you're thinking about other things and you do, you're not paying as much attention to setting as hard as you could and so it's not fully set and it just goes soft a lot quicker so you just got to be a little bit more diligent with that and really keep your focus on arching get squeezing every drop of that lumbar extension as you can like really try and just think of turning your back into a U and hold it and then go and just know that as you get more tired, you get a little lazy with it and try and overdo it. But overall, they're great, man. And um, way better than last time. You got rid of all that nonsense in the beginning and, and the bar is moving in a much more predictable way. So good job. Um, let's, yeah, that was good. Good to see you as always. Thanks for wrapping up the show. Uh, we did it. We got through it. Hour over a little over an hour. Uh, I'm wiped. Whew, I've been out of practice with these. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Uh, who knows where I'll be next week, but we will do a form check Friday unless for some reason I'm on the road back to Idaho or back to El who knows, but, um, we're going to keep doing it. And, uh, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for watching and let's do it all again next week. You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you soon.